It's the big day of the Mopes year, the Donkey Derby at Wibblesfield. Like many great sporting events, it's a fashion parade as well, and all the best people are here. Not only the world of fashion, but the world of high finance too, all waiting with bated breath for the starter signal. Much more exciting than the Epsom Derby, which is all over in a couple of minutes, this can go on for hours. Still, some of the entries do realise that there's a race on and work hard to give the punters a run for their money. Though some riders seem to think it's the Grand National, others keep their heads and their seats for a splendid finish. Ride him, cowboy, if you can. Talking of cowboys, here's a real one. At least after 102 Western films, which have made him loved all over the world, Hopalong Cassidy is a very real cowboy to these lads, as he was to their fathers and even some of their grandfathers. Hoppy is on holiday in London, and he's meeting his young friends in the festival gardens. When he throws his loose change around, it takes more than a few commissionaires to stop the rush. These two-month-old Axis deer are just a few of the babies growing up this summer at Dudley, one of the Midlands' favourite zoos. With all this fine weather about, the oldens are almost as lively as the youngsters. These, by the way, are Barbary sheep. The elephant is a youngster too, only two and a half years, which may be old for a llama, but he's a baby as elephants go. Over to the penguin pool, where there are more new arrivals finding their way about. Rub up. Don't look now, but somebody's cheating. But when the visitors are as young as the residents, it's turn and turn about. Across the Atlantic to New York for the Palm Beach Round Robin Golf Tournament. This famous event has been won four times by Sammy Sneed, and he's in fine form again today, though he's up against some tough international opposition. The big crowd is treated to some fine displays of putting. Look at this by Australia's Peter Thompson. Right into the cup, but he's not the only one. Here's an effort by Ed Fergo, former Open champion. As the crowd converges at the final hole, Sam Sneed is in the lead. He misses an easy one, but he's had plenty of points in hand for victory. And the cup is his for the fifth time. The fairy tale castle of Salem, near Lake Constance in western Germany. What better setting for the marriage of a prince and princess? The prince is Tonislav, brother of ex-king Peter of Yugoslavia, and Margarita of Baden is the bride. Among the 150 guests is the Duke of Edinburgh, who is the bride's uncle, with his mother, Princess Andrea of Greece. Princess Margarita went to school in England and trained as a nurse at St. Thomas's Hospital, London. The Duke of Edinburgh will be seeing more of his niece and her husband, for after their honeymoon in Sicily, they plan to live at Prince Tonislav's farm in Sussex. Ex-King Umberto of Italy is also a guest. One civil and two religious ceremonies make the wedding a very colourful one, and the gay national costumes add to its brilliance. From a castle window, bride and groom salute the dancers, weaving patterns of good fortune in the courtyard below. Senior Air Force officers try out the Stirling gun, successor to the Sten. Chief of Air Staff Sir Dermot Boyle is a competitor in this top brass shooting match. Former command chief Sir Harry Broadhurst is here too, and if anyone thinks senior officers can't shoot, just take a look at this. The shooting over, Sir Dermot Boyle and Sir Harry Broadhurst walk down the range to compare results. And the top marksman among the top brass, Air Vice Marshal Hogan. The first emigrants to Australia under the Bring Out of Britain scheme are seen off by Sir Eric Harrison, High Commissioner for Australia, at St Pancras Station. The scheme was launched earlier this year to widen the scope for British migrants. Formerly, the £10 assisted passages were available only to people who were sponsored by friends or relatives in Australia, or were skilled in certain trades. Now, a limited number of passages are given to migrants who have no one to sponsor them. Fifty families are leaving in the first batch, 
and 50 more are to follow them a month later. Saying goodbye is hard for the relatives who are left behind, but once the parting itself is over, they will have the consolation of knowing that their young people are sailing away on a great adventure where opportunity is limitless. In the British games at the White City, the International 880 soon develops into an Anglo-German battle. But it's the British who force the pace. Brian Hewson takes the lead with Michael Rawson holding close to him. But East Germany hands Rheinnagel. He's waiting his chance not far behind. And now it's Leslie Locke at the head with Hewson chasing him, followed by Veals and Patterson. And here's the German challenge. Rheinnagel pounding after Hewson with only 100 yards to go. But he's left it too late, he just can't overtake him. The British boy's holding him off. Yes, the Germans defeated. And Brian Hewson races home in 1 minute 49.8 seconds. Only 1.2 seconds outside his own British record. Now for the International Mile, which includes Ritzenhain of Germany, who beat Perry at Melbourne. Right from the start, the German leads. But lying third is Derek Ibbotson, number seven, biding his time as he has so often and so successfully done before. And at just the right moment, he puts on the pressure. With every yard, Ibbotson's gaining on the German. Ritzenhain has used up all his reserve, and Ibbotson is hurling himself ahead, streaking for the tape in a brilliant sprint finish. The Germans three and a half seconds behind, and it's yet another victory for Britain. <laughs> 